termite on Siouan News at 5. An explosion at a plant in Lytton, Iowa sends three people to the hospital. An important deadline is looming for thousands of people who legally carry guns in Woodbury County. Prison inmates raising shelter and rescue dogs. How these four-legged friends are getting the training they need to become great pets. This is Siouan News at 5 on KMEG 14. Investigators remain on the scene of an industrial accident in Sac County, Iowa tonight. They are trying to pinpoint the cause of an explosion that happened late yesterday afternoon. Now, at this time, a welding accident appears to be the blame for that blast at the ProLion plant in Lytton, Iowa. Three people were injured, now two of them seriously. 34-year-old Earl Moore of Milford Center, Ohio, and 32-year-old Manuel Ruiz of Columbus, Ohio, were working inside a large storage tank at the plant at the time of the explosion. They were both taken to Loring Hospital in Sac City and transferred to Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha. Moore's injuries were described as life-threatening, Ruiz's as severe. Now, 52-year-old Dana Boom of Lakeview, Iowa, was also injured. He was taken to Stewart Hospital in Lake City, where he was treated and released. The Woodbury County Sheriff's Office is reminding hundreds of gun permit holders it's time to renew their permits. 2,300 people took advantage of new gun laws in 2011, and those licenses are up for renewal in January. The Sheriff's Office says it's doing what it can to help make the process easy for gun owners. It's confusing, um, and uh, we, we're aware that it's confusing. Uh, we've we've done uh, taken some steps to hopefully help people uh, get through it, uh, because after the first of the year, we're going to start seeing the renewals, the five-year renewals on the non-professional carry permits that we have. Wick says the sheriff's office has put together a frequently asked questions page about the renewal process on their website. You can find a link to that page in this story on our website at SulanNews.com. The Sioux City man charged with sexually abusing a 13-year-old girl in the ICU waiting room at Mercy Medical Center is pleading not guilty. 20-year-old Alex Anderson was charged with third-degree sexual abuse in this case. Now, he entered his written plea of not guilty this morning in Woodbury County District Court. His trial is set to get underway next March. Now, until then, he remains free on bond. Canines are going into a South Dakota state prison for training so they could be adopted by their forever new home. As our Jessica Warren tells us, it's all thanks to a new program for inmates to learn new skills and to help raise those dogs. Here at the Mike Durfee State Prison in Springfield, South Dakota, two nonprofit organizations are teaming up with 12 inmates that are training these canines to help disabled veterans. Behind the barbed wires, the buildings, and thick walls, there's a select group of inmates at the Mike Durfee State Prison. Some serving life sentences, some with lesser sentences. But for the time being, they're training rescue dogs. Oh, I, I love dogs, and he's a great dog. He's smart. He helps uh, Bradford over here get off this, out of his chair very well. Gerald Bradford and Jamie Nicholson are training this dog, Rocky. Jerry, why don't you tell means a lot means a lot. It's a great program. In an effort to provide these dogs with a safe environment, the Department of Corrections started a new project called Hounds of Hope, a team effort with Noah's Hope Animal Rescue of Sioux City and Partners for Patriots. I mean, these guys are very, very passionate about training these dogs. I mean, they love these dogs just like we do. These guys have been doing outstanding with him. Just yeah. outstanding, you know. The program runs seven days a week where 12 inmates are assigned to work from 6 to 11 in the morning, then at 12.30 to 4.30 in the afternoon, and last shift at 5.30 to about 9.30 in the evening. Inmates tell me the program is a win-win for them. Well, it helps us with our attitudes and encourages us to change our ways because if we can work with our attitudes in here, out there we can control them better with human beings because of these dogs do give us a hard time mm -hmm. and we're able to control our tempers around animals like this and not to abuse them. Once the dogs complete their training, they'll go on to Noah's Hope for adoption and Partners for Patriots for a Wounded Veteran. Overall good program. It's a community service uh, program and once again it's good for the inmates. Uh, they're all dogs are good. They can be trained to do great things. Reporting in Springfield, South Dakota, I'm Yetzko Auron, Siouxland News. Students at Marcus got a hands-on in-classroom training today on CPR. 
That class comes courtesy of the Little Sioux Corn Processors Plant, which donated a CPR in schools training kit to Marcus Merritt and Cleghorn. That program part of the American Heart Association initiative to train people how to perform CPR. Over 326,000 people every year have a cardiac arrest outside of a hospital or doctor's office setting. 90% of those people will not survive. We have found that over 70% of people don't feel that they are qualified and know what to do in case of an emergency. By training kids in CPR at school, we can provide millions more lifesavers in the future. Now the Heart Association CPR in Schools program is developed to train kids in the basics of CPR in as little as 30 minutes. We know that it'll, it'll serve the school well for many years, that there's going to be more than one set of uh, graduates that are going to be able to use it. It's, it'll just be part of the community for quite a long time. Two teachers at MMC each got one of the kits to help teach those students. Well, drivers in Sioux City have one bright spot in their construction filled commutes. The price of gas has dropped below the $2 per gallon mark at several stations in town. Gas can be found for as little as $1.91 per gallon in the Singing Hills area. At stations on the west side, gas is selling for $2.05 per gallon. And it's been nearly a year since gas was this cheap in Siouxland, as gas prices hit $1.85 last December before rebounding to around $2.50 this summer. Tell you 185. Oof, that would that. sound good. Yes. Well, we saw a little bit of sunshine as the day went on. And can we get a little more of that, Chad? Well, tomorrow I think the sun does make a big time return, but it's also going to come with some very strong winds. We're talking wind gusts in excess of 50 miles an hour once again, but the cloud cover has returned late this afternoon. Our Skywatch camera brought to you by Lamar's Icon Ag and Turf, and you can see that there is a little bit of traffic out there. Satellite and radar imagery showing rainfall moving off to the east, so as we head through the overnight hours, looks like we will be looking at those skies starting to slowly clear out. Mostly cloudy and 46 right now in Sioux City, 47 in Sioux Falls. We have wind advisories out through the day on Thursday, again looking for wind gusts up close to 50 miles an hour. And now also winter storm watches out for parts of northeast Nebraska, southeastern South Dakota, and a good chunk of northwest Iowa. We'll tell you when and how much snow could possibly fall in the area coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Chad. Well, every month, Morningside College and Sula News are teaming up to highlight a high school student who has gone above and beyond. Sula News put a Jacqueline Driscoll introduces us to this month's winner, Jeremiah Johnson from Vermilion High School, a shy senior who's incredibly respected by his peers. A valued member of his senior class and referred to as an understated leader, Jeremiah Johnson is the epitome of a role model. I nominated him, but he certainly was um, recommended by lots of teachers. He's a captain of his high school basketball team and a leader of his high school track team. Jeremiah says he enjoys being a positive influence on his peers. It means a lot because I kind of have a big role and people like look up to me, so I kind of have to fill that role, I guess. Jeremiah is also a natural helper, a national program where students are chosen and trained to be a resource for struggling students within their school. We just like help kids like if we see them like have like are, are down or something, we can like help them and talk to them like like kind of the student guidance counselors, I guess you could say. He is chosen by the staff for that because he um, is available to students, he's approachable and doesn't go beyond his capabilities. He knows when to ask for help and when to refer others for help. Humble, quiet, and definitely deserving. Jeremiah is grateful for this recognition. There's a lot of good like people in this school and it's just cool to be the one that got selected. If you would like to nominate a student, you can do so on our website at sulanews.com by clicking on the Features tab and then the Above and Beyond nomination form. A lot of great kids out there. In fact, the Sioux City E student is a finalist for a nationwide technology contest. Our Kayla Novak joins us now. So Kayla, how did he become a finalist and what's the next step? Well, Larry and Diana, the East High School senior Robert Gottberg is just one of 250 students to move on in the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow contest. 4,000 students submitted ideas that could help their school using science, technology, engineering, and math. Robert had noticed that his school was either too cold or too hot, so he came up with the idea to use solar panels connected to heating and cooling systems to help regulate the temperature of school facilities while saving energy and money. 
Uh, I felt pretty good. I was kind of surprised that I won. So I generally, I don't think I'm very good at science, but. The finalists already received two Samsung Galaxy tablets for their classroom. Now Robert and his teacher Trevor Miller will compete with four other Iowa finalists for a chance to win $20,000. If they win, they plan to use the money to help put more technology in classrooms and they would also move on to the nationwide contest for the opportunity to win more money and a trip to Washington, D.C. for an award ceremony. That his parents, uh, Lisa and Woody, are very proud of him. I they bet should they be. are. Bet. Well, still to come tonight on Siouxland News at 5. We've got some advice on how to prevent holiday eating habits from winding your waistline. That's in tonight's Help Watch. You're watching Siouxland News at 5 on KMEG 14 with Larry Wentz, Diana Castillo, Siouxland's Chief Meteorologist Chad Sandwell, and Sports Director Chris Ninehouse. This is Siouxland News at 5 on KMEG 14. The holidays are approaching and sometimes our busy schedules mean that exercise takes a back seat. But as Holly Furfer tells us in tonight's Health Watch, working out is one of the best gifts we can give ourselves and those we love. Amazingly healthy skin. If you want to live longer, stay leaner, boost your mood and keep your mind young, Grab your tennis shoes and get moving. Try this weekly exercise prescription from the Cleveland Clinic. Get 30 minutes of resistance training a week. General physical activity, 10,000 steps a day, 20 minutes, three times a week of cardio. And make that cardio strenuous enough to break a sweat for the whole 20 minutes. It's worth the effort because exercise also decreases the risk for many serious medical conditions. Decreases heart attacks, decreases arrhythmias, decreases cancer all throughout your body. Almost every cancer is decreased because what exercise does is improve immune function. And working out not only builds muscles, but builds brain. Exercise helps prevent the loss of brain volume as we age, and it helps keep our brain circuits young and our thinking sharp. And being physically active can enrich our golden years. Not only do you live longer, but you compress the period of disability so that you live healthier longer. And experts add you're never too old to start exercising. And even if you overindulge at the dinner table this holiday season, that's no excuse to slack off on exercising. Well, good news for you caffeine junkies out there. A new study says all that coffee actually could help you live longer. According to a new study, drinking coffee, whether regular or decaf, could reduce the risk of death. A study from the Harvard School of Public Health looked at the coffee drinking habits of more than 200,000 women and 50,000 men. It found that people who drink coffee daily, even up to four cups a day, are less likely to die from heart disease, neurological disease, type 2 diabetes, or suicide than other people. The number of adults in the United States who smoke has declined by about 10% over the past 18 years. That's according to the new government statistics from the first half of this year. The study found just under 15% of Americans currently smoke. That's the lowest percentage since this survey began in 1997, when nearly a quarter of U.S. adults were smokers. CDC researchers attribute the decline to a variety of factors. While smoking rates are going down, the rate of STD infections in the United States is at its highest level in decades. Centers for Disease Control Prevention says STDs increased dramatically in 2014. 1.4 million cases of chlamydia were reported. CDC says that's the highest number of annual cases of any condition ever reported. Now, reports of gonorrhea and syphilis also increased in 2014. According to the report, there was a particularly troubling increase in syphilis infections among men. Well, we take a look at the almanac today. Three days in a row of steady rainfall has pushed our debt or our surplus, I should say, up close to four and a half inches above normal. It was temperatures in the 40s today, but will that hang around as we head towards the end of the week? Details on your forecast are coming up next. First alert weather with Siouxland's chief meteorologist, Chad Sandwell.
There was a brief sighting, it seemed like, of the sun for a while, mixed with some clouds. And yeah, just what at, happened? The, <laughs> at the end of the lunch hour, we saw a glimmer of hope. And I tell you what, if you enjoy the sunshine, you'll enjoy tomorrow, but it's ah. going to come at a cost, as things usually do this time of year. Let's go ahead and take a look outside. This is a look at our Skywatch camera. Pretty quiet in downtown Sioux City. Of course, traffic moving about pretty slowly through that construction corridor there, just to the south of the uh, Floyd Boulevard exit there. Take a look at our Skywatch camera from Ottawa. Certainly some cloud cover hanging on and you notice a little bit of clearing taking place just off to the west. Our final stop takes us to Norfolk this evening. The view brought to you by Square Tire where we still see mostly cloudy skies. Again, most places are expected to see that cloud cover start to thin out over the next several hours. In the meantime, tomorrow, plenty of sunshine, a very windy afternoon, going to start tapping into some colder air. And by colder, look at the highs for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. In the 30s, Friday is a day that we're going to talk about quite a bit here in just a moment. Chances of snow picking up across the area, but eventually things will kind of quiet down as we head back towards the early part of next week. Big picture showing the rain from earlier today moving out. Behind it to the west, things will stay pretty quiet for at least another 12 to 24 hours. But the one thing that we are going to see throughout the day tomorrow, very strong northwesterly winds. We talk about tight pressure gradients, and when you can barely draw any lines between them, you know it's tight. So looking for 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts, it will start to pick up later this evening. One front going to slide on through the area, so those tight pressure gradients hang on through most of the day on Thursday. We'll still be looking for very strong winds, but you see here plenty of sunshine. That's for Thursday. Now, as we head towards Friday, we start looking out to the west, and it's going to come out of the Rockies. Here comes this area of low pressure early Friday morning out ahead of the system. You see a wide swath of snow across southern South Dakota, northern Nebraska. As the day wears on, all of this is going to start moving towards the east. So there's a look at 115 Friday afternoon. Not the prettiest of pictures if you have plans to travel across the state of Iowa on Friday. But overall, everything going to start moving out. There's 515 Friday evening. Eventually, the snows move out by Saturday, but not before we see several inches of snow. Winter storm watch in effect until midnight Saturday for parts of northwest Iowa, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Work your way a little further to the east. Those advisories stay out a little bit longer. The reason for the advisories, the area of snow that we could see anywhere from four to six inches across the area, you get over towards Ames, how about seven inches possible Friday into Saturday. So winter is coming and it's coming quick. Let's go ahead and take a look at our current conditions right now in Sioux City, 46 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Our west southwest winds are at 13 miles an hour. Tonight, windy and cold. Temperatures dropping all the way down to 28 degrees. Then for tomorrow, the winds stay up, but we will see the sunshine. 43 the afternoon high. And there's a look at your extended forecast. Keeping our eyes certainly on Friday. Snow chances are there. It's a system that's still evolving, so we'll keep our eyes on it for you through the night tonight and also tomorrow. I guess I better go stock up on the ice, sir. <laughs> yes, a shovel would be good too. <laughs> I, that, I have that ready. All right, thanks, John. <laughs> Well, the Musketeers have a chance to get back above 500 this weekend when they play a pair of games against Green Bay. Coach Jay Verde is back for our weekly Musketeers Coaches Show today to tell us what we can expect against the Gamblers. Sports is next. Welcome back to another edition of the Muskies Coaches Show. Joining us again today is the Musketeers head coach, Jay Verity. Coach, the ebbs and flows of the season continue uh, fresh off a tough 3-2 loss. A third period goal against Des Moines was the, was the difference this past weekend. We're at the uh, quarterway point, 15 games in out of 60. What have you learned about the team so far? Well, you know, it's been up and down, like you said. There's been some ebbs and there's been some flows. And I think if you look at the conference, you're going to see that all year. Uh, Des Moines started last weekend uh, near the bottom, and they came into our building, beat us, went down to Omaha, Omaha, beat Omaha. So I think you're going to see a lot of that back and forth all season long. Something that's been back and forth, too, has been kind of the roster. You've had players who are literally so good that they have to leave the team to go play in other tournaments. We just found out today after Ellie Tolvin, and you, you missed him for a few games there, um, the leading scorer on the team. Now Ryan Zulsdorf and Josh Wilkins were just named to the World Junior A Challenge team, and that's the U.S. Nationals. They'll be gone in mid-December. That's a big deal for them, huh? Well, I think you have to treat it with excitement. Any time a country uh, federation calls for a player, uh, that's an exciting time for that player. So if USA Hockey calls for Josh Wilkins and Ryan Zulsdorf, uh, we as the Musketeers organization are excited about it and it's going to provide some opportunity for some other players 
Uh, the same time we got that call, we also got the call about David Trinkberger, who's going to be leaving us December 1st and headed back to Germany to play for their national team as well. Right, and uh, we had that happen in baseball this year for the Explorers here in Sioux Land, and they had a pretty good season, lost some team players to Team Canada for the Pan Am Games. And, well, you guys have two games this weekend against the same opponent twice, Green Bay. What do you know about the Gamblers? Well, I know Sam Saliba's coming to town. It's one of the all-time favorite Musketeers here. Uh, he was involved in a trade that happened at the end of last season. I know he's excited to come back and, and play here in Sioux City. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing Sam back. And they're a good team. They're on a three-game win streak. Uh, they had uh, over 11 returners coming back to their group from last year. And um, we're going to have to be ready to play this weekend. Their goaltender is the number two ranked goalie in the USHL, tied for second, had two goals against exactly. Uh, Adam Huska is his name. You know, when you guys are playing against such a good goaltender like that, does that change your strategy or just business as usual? Business as usual for us. I think goaltenders... Uh, if you overstudy them or talk about situations too much with them, you can get yourself in trouble and kind of overthink things. Um, for us, we just got to make sure we're generating shots, generating opportunities, and getting traffic in front of a big goaltender like that. He's Jay Verity, head coach of the Sioux City Musketeers. I've got an idea for a perfect little Friday for you. Watch our Siouxland teams, Western Christian and Spirit Lake, play for state titles at 11-2. and two. And on our sister station, KPTH, and then head over to the Tyson at 7. Uh, Friday and Saturday, we'll have highlights of all those games on Friday night on Siouxland News at 10. Larry, Diana, Chad, back to you. All right, and it's probably going to feel like a little hockey weather as we get closer to the weekend. Yeah, rain all this week, just setting up the stage for a winter storm watch. Snow's expected Friday. The watch actually starts Friday, 6 a.m. It will continue until early Saturday morning. Again, looking for widespread amounts of 4 to 6 inches of snow possible. Tonight, we'll see temperatures dipping into the upper 20s. The winds start to pick up, gusting to 35. Then tomorrow, those winds actually increase, if you can believe that. 43 the afternoon high. It's going to feel a lot colder than that, though, as winds will be out of the west, gusting at times to 50 miles an hour. Good news about tomorrow, plenty of sunshine. Well, four to six inches. To me, that sounds like a lot. Because, you know, I've, I was here last winter. but Just getting warmed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you tonight.